Hello, greetings, wonderful viewers and subscribers of GMEB TV. I am a presenter for today, Bob Carfrey. In this episode today, we are located at the National Nutrition Agency in Acronomics Nana on a project draft report that has been funded by Giraffe. And in this episode of ours, we will present to you the consultancy for this very project. And the project's team is centered on the poultry products inception manual. Thank you. Used by inspectors of the Food Safety and Quality Authority of the Gambia and other competent national bodies, in particular Department of Livestock Services, delegated by FSQA in line with the Food Safety and Quality Act of 2011. This manual is developed through broad-based stakeholder consultation and will be subjected to a national validation to incorporate stakeholder inputs. A training workshop will be organized to cover both theory and practical aspects for the end users of the manual. This manual is developed within the framework, within the implementation framework of the World Bank funded Gambia Inclusive and Resilience Agricultural Value and Development Project, Giraffe. The consultancy is commissioned by the Central Project Coordinating Unit, CPCU, Ministry of Agriculture, MOA, to contribute to attainment of project objectives. The, the consultancy is commissioned by Central Project Coordinating Unit, Ministry of Agriculture, to contribute to attainment of project objectives. The development objective of Giraffe Project is to promote the development of inclusive resilient 1.2 the scope of the manual on the inspection of poultry products in the gambia so this 1.2 is uh, what you expect to find in this manual whatever is there is the content of the manual in a big summary so uh, manual for inspection of poultry products in the gambia was developed using a rigs based inspection uh, approach that covers all aspects of poultry product, that is poultry meat and eggs inspection, across the value chain. The manual comprises eight chapters, namely chapter one, introduction and background, chapter two, general principles of meat inspection, chapter three, inspection of poultry meat, chapter four, inspection of poultry eggs, chapter five, sample collection and handling, chapter six, risk-based inspection of poultry products, Chapter 7, Farm to Fork Approach to Hygiene and Sanitation of Poultry Products. And Chapter 8, On Principles and Implementation of Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. That is HAZAP at slaughter facilities and slaughter and processing facilities. So we go on to now note what is expected in each chapter. Chapter one is an introductory chapter that set the contextual framework for the manual, covering project context scope of the manual, overview of the poultry sector in the Gambia, overview of inspection of poultry products in the Gambia, gaps identified and the way forward. Chapter two seeks to equip inspectors with knowledge on general principles of meat inspection, that is, the principles of anti-mortem and post-mortem inspection. At the end of the chapter, it is envisaged that the inspectors will have a profound understanding of the definitions, objectives, and procedures, and the rationale for judgments and dispositions as outcomes of meat inspection. This chapter will provide a solid foundation for users to better understand the chapter on poultry meat inspection. Then chapter three and four on inspection of poultry meat and eggs respectively are hands on practically oriented models that are intended to equip inspectors with relevant practical skills to effectively conduct poultry product inspection on step by step up generally very low. It is characterized by inadequate structures, poor hygiene and sanitation and lack of proper facilities like running water. Slaughter and processing of birds in such condition is a potential food safety threat to consumers. The major live bird markets for poultry, that is both indigenous and exotic, 
exist in urban municipal markets of Banjul, Serekunda, Bakau, Brikama, where they are kept in cages. In the rural areas, the main life but that is indigenous life but market comprise the weekly market called Lumo, where itinerant traders bring uh, birds collected from villages for marketing. There are 23 major livestock markets in the Gambia, from the Gambia Livestock Marketing Agency 2020. If you have anything new, you can just let us so that we can update. But the information is from you people in 2020. When I was doing some work, I went to find out about the market. 25. Write it down for me. 25. Then you write Kilma 2024. Yes. Very good. Thank you for that. Yeah. Except for Abuko and Birikama, which are located in urban areas and operate on a daily basis, the rest are weekly Lumo markets located mostly uh, in villages close to borders with Senegal. All of them sell live birds. Most of the live birds sold in these markets are local chicken originating from Senegal. Some people prefer to slaughter and dress chicken at markets. So what we want to say is that chicken is being slaughtered at the Lumos and at the Brikama Life Bird Market. Unfortunately, no running water. If there is no running water, it makes uh, This is called farm to trade approach to this food so safety. This so-called, so sorry. This so-called farm to trade approach to food safety requires full integration of inspection with activities happening both upstream and downstream, as well as a strong collaboration between all government departments but remains uh, misunderstood in many countries. That is FAO 2019. This requires closer collaboration with sister institutions, in particular with the Department of Livestock Services. Since its establishment in June 2013, the Food Safety and Quality Authority of the Gambia has taken concrete steps towards implementing a control system based on risks ensuring that decisions and measures are based on risk assessment as enshrined in the Food Safety and Quality Act 2011. To this end, a number of capacity building activities of the staff have been conducted. Some inspectors have been trained on risk analysis and hazard analysis critical control point. Inspectors of food products of animal inspection of food products of animal origin is key in the food control system. The Department of Livestock Services is the competent body responding to the training of its user, users. It's all the more important in the current context of the ever increasing demands in poultry products in the Gambia. So we want to stress that there is a lot of expertise at DLS on meat inspection, but unfortunately, uh, not at poultry inspection. Uh, we ask uh, people across the country, and the same thing with food safety, they are also concerned with the less capacity in the area of poultry inspection. So this manual is timely for the country. It is very timely. That's what we just wanted to stress there. During the nationwide stakeholder consultations in the development of this manual, the following gaps have been identified, among others. No systemic inspection of poultry products and, uh, in the country. Poultry and poultry products, good. No technical regulations developed specifically for poultry products, good. No inspection manual for poultry products is available to serve as a guide. No public own proper infrastructure for poultry slaughter and processing. No hazard plants at slaughter facilities across the country, and inadequate laboratory capacity for food safety surveillance and food safety quality control. To address these gaps, all stakeholders, in particular FSQA, Ministry of Agriculture, and its technical arms, in particular Department of Livestock Services and the Gambia Livestock Marketing Agency, as well as municipal and regional market uh, uh, authorities, need to work together.
In the development of this manual, due consideration was given to, the number of, uh, to a number of key factors, among which is the inadequate number of FSQA inspectors across the country. This justifies an approach that is cognizant of the need for closer collaboration and partnership, as well as the need for prudent and maximum utilization of both human and material resources, which can be attained through a risk-based inspection system. Furthermore, meat uh, and poultry inspection needs to be modernized to take into account current public health hazards such as Salmonella, Campylobacter, Sigella, toxin producing E. coli, as well as chemical hazard. These hazards do not generally present clinical symptoms in live animals or pathological lesions in the carcass or the offal. Therefore, traditional meat inspection, where decisions about disease conditions, abnormalities, and contamination in animals are based on what can be seen, felt, or smelled, is no more suitable to protect effectively human health against meat borne biological and chemical hazard. In view of the growing trend in broiler production with uh, layer farms over 40,000 capacity, and the fact that 90% of poultry products consumed in the country are important, moving to a risk-based inspection system, so that there are a lot of farms with 40,000 capacity. Minte is one of them. Savage farms, I invited them, is one of them. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Sanyang is another one. And then there is Java, another one. How many of you people have a capacity of more than 40,000 in Gambia? Maybe we need to write it down for our document. <laughs> Because they have association and they know each other. Yeah, we just want to have an idea. Because the Food Safety Authority would want to know the people with that capacity. They want to know. Three. Those with 45. Those with 45. Yeah, the capacity and then to meet. You know, you have a facility that can... 140,000. That's what we are talking about. The people with that facility that can handle 40,000. Muhammad Sanya? Mm -hmm. Yo, yourself? Jaffa? Yes. The three of you have uh, 40, more than 40,000. Savage Farm uh, has built a capacity of 60,000, but they want the badge not to come uh, all at once. You know it very well. When you do all at once, and now the birds are all for slaughter, you will not have any eggs. So it's always good to leave. Let them be older than each other, maybe by three months, four months, six months. So, but the capacity is there for 60,000, for 60,000 birds. Uh, if uh, one is slaughtering those birds when they are already spent, putting 60,000 in the market, definitely, if there is any problem, the risk is greater than 100 bars. So, inspection, risk-based inspection. Yeah. You know, you just stated that only, you know, the study was conducted on the prevalence of salmonella on poultry meat. Skin cuts. There, you one half of course. On and poultry meat skin cuts. It's a continuous one. It's from the skin cuts. Yeah. It's yeah. They use only the skin cut yeah. and the clay the as example. I understand. That was the methodology. Yeah, the methodology. Now you are reporting. Yes. To explain that the study was conducted there in the past. So yes. And how it was conducted. Yes. I know the but joint everything. Okay. After you should, uh, you know, after stating that it was conducted at Wale. Okay. okay. Thank you. The capacity gained from past trainings conducted by FSQA on risk analysis and hazard analysis critical control point would complement this manual towards the impl implementing a risk-based approach to poultry product inspection. However, laboratory support for testing is required for the shift in approach to risk-based inspection system. The current gaps in food microbiology testing need to be addressed to enhance effective implementation. Uh, during our consultation with FSQA, uh, it came out clear that one of the capacity gaps is microbiology for food safety testing. 
They do have a lab and they do some tests, rapid tests mostly, chemical testing, yes. But for microbiology, there is capacity problem. And when we are talking about Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, then capacity uh, in the and adequate candling light. Given these uh, conditions, a proficient egg inspector can observe grading factors affecting X quality and reliably make great determination based on the 100 egg sample. Uh, I want to ask whether you, they have candling facility at the temperature is actually? At the temperature is actually? Yeah. No, I have no idea. Well, they must have it, hence it's actually. Yeah. Because since we are going to Abuko, mm -hmm. And yeah. going to visit yeah, Abatua and other places, if they have it, it's an opportunity yeah. also yeah, obviously to, 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 to visit yeah. it. Yeah. It's not something that is very sophisticated. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think they have it there, so we can see it in practice. <laughs> to approach a suitable skill level, one must develop a, a pattern or workplace organization, carry out essential equipment, and feel comfortable with two jumbo eggs on each hand hand-eye coordination and visual perception of what the candid light reveals uh, improves with experience in egg inspection. So meaning that the people who are uh, doing the egg candling with time, with, they, they have improved skills and experience, and that enhances the work for them. Uh, even uh, routine meat inspection is like that. The people who are working day to day, every day in the abattoir, the skills they have in, in meat inspection is at a level different from anyone who does not do that work. So that's what we are talking about. A variety of candling lights are used in egg inspection. Brightness of the light source should always be considered. Egg inspection is best done in a darkened room with candling light sufficient intensity to allow the inspector to make an accurate determination of the X interior quality. In performing uh, origin inspections, a proper candling booth is both made available at uh, many parking plants. If not available, a darkening area out of uh, traffic is usually easily found, such as in the internal storeroom of the cooler room. Restrooms should not be used for egg inspection for obvious reasons. Do you know that obvious reasons? Exactly, to avoid contamination. When candling, uh, the egg should be at elbow level and the egg held between the thumb and the forefinger so its long axis is perpendicular to the light, to the candling light, between the thumb and the forefinger and the edge of the egg should be opposite the light, so that the light passes through the egg. This provides exposure of all the cells and it contests as it dwindles. If an egg's quality is questionable, let me move up. If an egg's quality is questionable, the benefit of doubt goes to the packer. After several spins, consider the specimen egg acceptable and move on. Unless a definite defect is evident, when weighing eggs, be sure to tear your electric scale prior to weighing of eggs. And we took this from the reference and we, sorted, uh, we, we, we quoted the reference at the end of the book. No proper monitoring of poultry eggs in the Gambia. This manual proposes an egg inspection program comprising three types of inspection activities, namely retail monitoring, wholesale inspection monitoring, and production monitoring. So that is what we are proposing for the Gambia. There is no monitoring or inspection of eggs in this country. So for that, we are trying to come out with three-layer monitoring system. Uh, which has uh, inspection activities, namely retail monitoring, meaning that uh, from time to time, I'm sure they are doing it, FSQA people will be visiting some supermarket and other retail centers where eggs are sold and do some work on monitoring their quality. Wholesale inspection, 
at warehouses where uh, wholesale of eggs uh, are drawn. I mean, these are the importers of eggs into the country where they keep those eggs before the eggs go out to the retail shop. We should know the major importers of eggs, and from time to time, we should be visiting them. Hello, wonderful greatness of GMEB TV. With me here is the PRO of Giraffe. Sir, you're most welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I am the communication officer of the Giraffe Okay. Yes. Yeah, good. First of all, I would love to ask what have inspired Giraffe in to go ahead to sponsor or form this project that is about cultural products in such a manner. Thank you very much. As you may know, um, Giraffe is a World Bank member of the project that is um, aimed at helping the country promote from subsistence to commercial agriculture. And if you talk about commercial agriculture, you're not just talking about what is the agriculture and uh, what the two challenges that is affecting is exports. Our exports we ensure to safety and the quality control system. We need to safety and quality control system. So poultry is one of the fundamental commodities of the project, and uh, uh, this is why the project in North is not uh, to support the initial of you know developing and also Um, 
So like the question would be like, you know, what is the situation and how far have you gone about this project preparation? Uh, the manual is prepared fully and today we came to validate the manual. So it has been validated and uh, we will do a training of uh, the food inspectors using this manual as our guide. It has been successful. We had uh, people from uh, different departments, food safety, livestock, uh, standards bureau, uh, Gambia Livestock Marketing Agency, uh, private poultry farmers, they participated in the validation works of food. It has been a success. Um, finally, Dr. Before we leave you, like, what will be your words of advice towards the stakeholders that are concerned?